so as Christopher has kindly introduced me, yeah, I come from a, 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 a commercial background and now work in the, in the public sector. So my talk today is going to be a little bit about some of my, my own personal experiences, but some of the differences that I've seen between, and similarities for that matter, between dealing with customers, but as the title suggests, now dealing predominantly with donors in the work that I do. So do a really quick introduction to start off with. So this is me both professionally and personally. So on a professional level, going back more years than I'd, I care to remember now, I started back in the insurance industry in a, an insurance company in the UK called Privilege, which was then taken over by probably the slightly better known direct line. And ultimately by the Royal Bank of Scotland to incorporate brands such as Churchill and Green Flag. Most might be aware of the of the Royal Bank of Scotland issue back in 2008. And as part of the coming out of the financial crisis, the insurance arm of the Royal Bank of Scotland had to divest and became Direct Line Group. Following Direct Line Group, and referring back to the interview that I did with Christopher, I then moved on to Yorkshire Building Society and worked with banks, uh, with brands like uh, YBS and Accord Mortgages. For most of that time, uh, doing roles concerned with either continuous improvement, a bit of lean work many years ago, but more latterly, uh, in the last sort of 10 years, very customer experience focused. And when it became trendy to, to call your team's customer journey management, that's the route that we went as well. And about six months ago, I made the transition to head up to a service ownership and strategy team within an NHS blood and transplant. And it really was that that awakening moment for me. So I'd been moving on to the right hand side of the slide. I'd been a blood donor for probably about 20 years. So I'm proud to say that I am an A positive blood donor and the emerald badge there that's, that sort of indicates that I've had 75 or more donations is something that I'll actually come on to, to later on as well. I'm currently actually sat on 97 credits, which is awesome because it's my team that looks after uh, the engagements that we do when somebody reaches 100, I'll be almost rewarding myself. And finally there, just to, to, to say, I am also a registered uh, organ donor as well. Uh, and I've also had that conversation with, uh, with my loved ones. So just a, a really quick introduction to NHS Blood and Transplant. I'm aware that some people may be aware of the work that we do, others may not. So really simple vision in the top, top right hand corner there. We want to create a world in which every patient receives the donation they need, whatever that donation is. And the slide there, starting on the left hand side, so it starts touching on some of the, the numbers that we deal with. So uh, across England each year, uh, 1.4 million units of blood are delivered to, to the hospitals that need it, alongside around about 250 units of, of so 250,000 uh, units of platelets and 200,000 units of of, of plasma as well. We have, we do have deferrals and I will come on to some of the challenges that we have in, uh, within the organization as well, but this was a real difference for me. So we're dealing with people who want to do something and we're giving up their own time to do something and have that motivation to do it. But actually on a daily and on a weekly basis, for a variety of reasons, around about 12% of those people can't do it. And that's a real challenge to, to maintain great donor experience when that message to some people is sadly that we can't take that donation today and that's a real challenge we have a number of different teams that help us we have some fantastic staff they're based at 28 static donor centers mainly in our city center locations which gather around about 25 percent of all our blood but we have 50 mobile teams and i actually spent when i first arrived a day out on one of the mobile teams assisting and they are really long and physical, physically demanding days for those teams. And they're the teams that collect around about 75% of our blood, literally packing the whole session up into a van at the end of the day and moving on to somewhere else the following day. So a real nod to the guys out on the front line there. My presentation today will be based around blood, but just to note as well, we have lots of other transplant activity as well. We have around 1,500 organ donors donate their organs after death each year. And around about a thousand living donations as well, which which translates into even more transplants on the back of that. So customers versus donors, some initial thoughts from me after probably six months in, in role now. I started touching on some of it there, but 
we've entered, I came into the, to, to the organization at a time when stocks were a real challenge. And for those of you that, that are familiar with our work, you will have seen back in October, the 12th of October, we actually released what we called an amber warning. And that's the first ever time in 75 year history of, of NHSBT that an amber warning has been released. And what that means is that the hospital trusts, that are the recipients of our products had to start considering how they use that blood, which in some instances meant that elective surgery was put back. So that just brings to life the types of pressures that we're dealing with on a day-to-day -day basis. And that's led to many, and in, in some instances, conflicting thoughts for me. How can I keep donor experience on that agenda when actually those stocks are literally a matter of life and death? They're, that's the sort of the level of challenge that we're faced with. Not only do we have those stocks at an overall level, we have various different blood types. So we have eight blood types predominantly, but a series of sub blood types as well. How do we actually balance those when on a daily basis, what the hospitals are using will mean that the demand for those is changing, which ultimately then impacts on the donor journey as well. We have different frequencies that some people can donate at. We have new donors. We have an incredible panel of loyal and regular donors but we have to balance that with bringing new people in like any other business does. So there are different requirements for a new donor. How do we balance those two things? Post COVID, as many people have found and as many people have experienced themselves, um, behavioral habits have changed. So how do we adapt and how do we deliver the donor experience that that's meant? And equally blood has a shelf life. So blood is currently in the UK only used, only got a shelf life of, of 32 days. When you throw that into the mix as well, that puts an extra stress on the donor experience that we deliver. Fair to say that probably initially and still to a degree now, I felt very much like that little girl uh, looks like on that slide. To take just this a step further, what I, I want to consider for this slide is actually just taking a, a customer from each of my previous roles and, and really tackling actually why, why do those customers or donors actually engage with your service, with your brand, the, the offering that you have. Thinking about an insurance customer, it was pretty simple when I worked in insurance customers have to have insurance. So if we're thinking about car insurance within this country, they, they have to have insurance and therefore that's what drives the engagement. Moving through my, my building society days, dealing with mortgages, generally speaking, people need a mortgage. There are a few, um, a lucky few that, that perhaps don't, but the vast majority of people need that mortgage. The massive difference in the work that I do now is that actually a blood donor wants to donate blood. And we've got, as the slide says, there are over 800,000 people that donate that blood each year. This is a slide that I've probably trimmed about 60 or 70 slides into one slide. And in, in itself is probably a, a whole presentation, but this looks at some of the motivations for leading on from why do people engage with us? At the top box there, we've got what's called love, power and giving. This is a few years old, but I think many of the sentiments still, still ring true. And really the love, power and giving, it's just the altruism, donating anything, donating blood, donating time, donating organs. It all sits under a very altruistic umbrella, if you will. We know from the work that we've done and from the insight that we've gathered that there are actually quite a series of things that lie underneath the altruism that, that drives that. One that I'm just going to take through, the, there are things that sit under each of those five boxes, but I'm just going to take you through the, the blood donation as a club, as, a, as an example. And what we find here is that the people who resonate with this category get a sense of, of belonging, a sense of blood donors as, a, as an exclusive set of people, if you will, that, and they can identify with that. And alongside that, as with any club, we find that there's a, almost a responsibility of membership. So there's that community feel. And it, it's really with things like this that you start to see the almost the daily link that, that my work has with the CX for good. So I'm in a really privileged position. That that's what I do every day. And for each of these, we look at, are there any then key barriers? And that becomes important when we start to consider how we design and how we improve our, our donor journeys. Within this one, the key barriers, any kind of rejection, we've got to be really con considerate of uh, within the journey. So back to, can that donation be taken on the day? Any long waits being turned away and particularly no award. So 
we're in a voluntary, almost in a, in a, in a voluntary donor situation here. So rewards become quite a big part of that. The second point I just want to touch on, and then I'll, I'll after that come on to, to some of the things that we're doing about this, is actually just how ingrained diversity is within within the work that we do as well. There's been massive strides forward, I think, in terms of diversity over the last few years. Lots of great work going on within donor journeys. But I don't think I've ever experienced that real fundamental link between diversity and actually what, what I do. Again, I've followed a similar format here. So when you think back to, to an insurance customer, there's, there are limited things that are needed here. So they need a vehicle that they own and drive. They, they need a means of paying for the policy. And only small segments of the market are really excluded from that, perhaps people with, with convictions and so on. A mortgage customer, perhaps we trim that down a little bit further. They need a house or an offer accepted, meet certain affordability criteria. But again, only certain segments of that market are excluded. When we think about the blood donor base, there are eight different blood types there are many rare subtypes that are required for for treatment of certain diseases and ethnicity has a fundamental role in that ethnicity can influence the prevalence of a particular blood subtype one of those particular blood subtypes is what we call ro and as it says here ro is a variation of, of essentially all of the positive blood types that you have and it is something that's critical in the dealing with sickle cell. Uh, the key stat here for me is second to bottom bullet point is that actually only 2% of our regular donors have that subtype. So 2% 2, 2 of all donors have that subtype, yet approximately one in two donors of black heritage have that blood type. So that's a real consideration for us in terms of how we attract donors, how we then treat donors through our donor journeys. And the one that people may be slightly more familiar with is the blood type O negative. People might know this as the universal blood type. So this is the blood type that can be given to any other blood types in, in particular emergencies. And it doesn't therefore come as a surprise that 8% of the population has that, yet we get around 13% of hospital requests for that particular blood type. So again, a real consideration in how, how we deal with that. So moving on to a couple of things that we're doing. So back to the reasons for why and the motivations. So this is post donation. If we think back to, to, to some of the barriers that were listed on that slide about potentially blood being wasted was one of them. What we do is we really consider how can we meet that within our donor journeys and actually following up in the week after the donation to let somebody know the journey of their blood, the literal journey. It's a relatively simple API link into Google Maps. You can see that's my last donation. I donated in Leeds. It went to a hospital in Manchester for testing, and then it went into Bury Fairfield General Hospital, and it was used there. So it's those types of things that we need to do to try and meet and, and really reinforce those reasons that people donate in the first place. We talked about milestones, my own milestone. This is something that I'm really proud of my team of delivering. So. We absolutely should be considering a channel as part of the things that we do as well and how channel can play a part. So our app in its latest release now has what we've termed donor milestones. So when you reach those credit milestones, you are then rewarded. You get that recognition within your own app. And in a similar way that you can share things across social media, this is something that you can share as well. So that, that just goes that step further to, for, for that reinforcement, but at the same time has a real impact on what we're trying to achieve. So it organically gets our message out there. It organically gets people signing up as, as blood donors, which is ultimately critical and what we're after. When we think about the ethnicity element of this, and I talked about attraction, we have a fantastic, partnerships team who have many different partnerships both in the commercial world and in the charity world this is a very recent one so we have the partnership team have a, a superb partnership with marvel and with the release of black panther recently have launched the not family but blood campaign absolutely critical to, to be, i'm not going to sit here and talk to you about the four p's of, of marketing today there'll be people out there that, that know plenty more than me about that but where do we place our for marketing activities is absolutely critical to access the audiences back to some of the statistics around, for example, RO. 
to access that black heritage donor base is really critical for us so that's some really key activity for us up front in the donor journey as well and then starting next week the final bit that i'll touch on is really starting to think about how we maximize that diversity so currently we don't know blood type until the point in the journey that the first donation has been made and the, and the donation has then been tested that has quite a lot of impacts so what we're actually trying next week is to redesign that journey and what we're actually doing is we're going to be sending the first of 30,000 kits out where donors can test their blood type at home first that will that has the, the potential to be transformational for us to make us think a little bit about how we can then target the people that we need in the ever moving picture that I described at the beginning. And a couple of sort of prompts at the bottom there on the slides around where the critical points are in your own customer or donor journeys and where they sit and why and whether that can be amended. So hopefully that's provided a little bit of a, an insight into the work that I do. A few takeaways from me. Whether dealing with CX or DX, many of the same principles. So thinking about why those customers interact with you that's not different in, in, in donor experience to customer experience there are perhaps just some subtly different ways of applying and thinking about that understanding why your customers interact with you and designing your journeys with that in mind is absolutely critical and is, is, is part of the success that we have particularly post donation with some of those communications for us diversity is absolutely critical and a fundamental part of what we do uh, and we have to maximize that we have to use that as a positive influence to, towards our outcomes and leverage that. It, there's some fantastic work going on across diversity, but consider that in the context of your own work, how does diversity or how could it positively influence the outcomes you deliver? And then to, just to end on, always remember why you do your job. So I, I was hooked on, on, on that concept of the customer experience world games from the first time that I, I took part and I'm now in, in a privileged position to work in an organization where actually every day I and my team and everybody that I work with make that difference. And it gives that same feeling every single day that I get up and that and I go to work. So just to finish on, I just wanted to play you a video from one of our old campaigns. We have many videos like this. It's, it, there's a huge library of, of videos that we can touch on a daily basis. This is an old campaign now, so it's not something that's current, but I thought some of the sentiments that come through this are very much in line with the CX for good. So I'll close by just playing the couple of minute video for you. The people that gave me blood are my superheroes. The thought of my three children growing up without their mum, that still frightens me. Without you, people like myself just wouldn't be here. We've launched a campaign to help the general public experience what it's like to give blood. So essentially somebody has a stick on their arm and then we use a specially adapted iPhone. They can see a blood bag filling up on a very large digital billboard and they'll see actually somebody who looks very ill getting better, which is an amazing thing to do. We have three real life people who have benefited from blood donations involved in the campaign, Shalona, Amit and Natasha. They've all received good transfusions or need regular transfusions. The piece that I need and I'm so reliant on and dependent on is the red blood cell. I have a condition called thalassemia. I had a baby last Christmas Eve by emergency cesarean. There was a, a large complication. I was extremely poorly. It was literally the last resort. We tried everything, so therefore they suggested a blood transfusion. Today we've been shooting the uh augmented reality billboard ad whereby we would shoot stills although we were using makeup and special effects what we were actually doing was replicating things that actually happened to them then we've taken a lot of direction of the people today about how they actually looked when they were at their sickest the campaign aim is to recruit new blood donors we particularly need younger people to come forward and also black and south asian communities go through that process of giving which is so powerful i wouldn't be here without those people to all those considering giving blood and haven't done so just yet i would say do it become a superhero save a life my children have still got their mum and every day 
my notes because people have donated their time and they've donated their blood. So thank you isn't enough. It really isn't, but thank you. Wonderful, Neil. Thank you so much for sharing uh, your experience so far. It's um, incredible how far you come in such a short amount of time, but I'm sure everyone who's, who's watching can see the, the learnings, the knowledge that you've gained over the years in terms of how to produce memorable experiences um, have paid you well because, you know, you, you're seeing their really interesting levels of engagement different under, understanding of different motivations uh, for, for doing this and therefore recognizing expectations and how you you re retain that that interest differs by different groups but underlying this is something really fundamental um in in terms of it's a it's a survival uh requirement for, for many people as you've just highlighted in those videos so neil thank you i'm i'm blown away by the quality of what you've just shared with us and um, I'm sure many, many others are as well.